What's up, everybody? It's Fabs here, and that's right, it's Christmas. Well, not yet, but it's coming, all right? We're going to be uh, in a very festive mood today. I'm Michael Fabiano. Uh, he is Bob Harris. This is the Fantasy Football Show presented by Believe, of course. And uh, Bob, like, you're looking very Ebenezer Scrooge. Bah, humbug. Hey, look, hey, I got it. Look, get into the holiday well, spirit with me. First of all, I don't. Red. I don't think a cowboy's hat is the holiday spirit. I have it a is. tree look, a over my here. shoulder. If you'll look notice, it. see, all right. look at that's the holiday spirit. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Santa Harris has arrived. Yeah, I, I love know him it. well. Really? I know him well. He's showing me up here. All right. Anyways, folks. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Uh -oh. All that good stuff. Uh, Bob and I are here to help you uh, win a gift, and that gift is an appearance in your fantasy football championships, which are less than two weeks away. We got this week, we got final week coming up in week 17, but first we're going to hit you up uh, with all the best starts and sits, a little DFS love as well. But first, the only people that don't get time off this time of year are pro athletes. Oh, and fantasy football analysts too. Let's not forget us. And Everybody, at, of course, at Bet Online with the NFL, the, the bowl season, NBA, they're all in full swings over the holidays. Bet Online isn't taking a second off to make sure you have all this, all the updated odds, the news, and the info that you're going to need to dominate. Uh, Bet Online has all the sports wagering information available, uh, both on desktop and mobile. You have access on both. Head there today to get into the action. Remember to use the promo code Believe B L E A V to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. I got to be honest. I got to take a screenshot of this. I, this is, I mean, me and Bob Harris right now. <laughs> Wait, can I take a screenshot of this right now, Bob? Come on, smile, man. <laughs> that's uh, that's going on social media. All right, let's start off talking about uh, some injuries. Now, remember, we have, we have Thursday night, of course. Then you've got Saturday games. Then you've got the Sunday slate, and then you got three games on Christmas. So we got a we got a whole bunch of football here coming up in the next what four or five days. So uh, just a couple of quick updates here for you. Uh, Mason Rudolph is going to start this week for the Steelers, and I'm telling you, Tomlin's starting Rudolph because it's Christmas. There's no other reason why it's Christmas. Yeah, you know, you know, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Um, I get it. I yeah, it. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Taylor Heineke will also be starting this week uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, no Christmas reference there available. I guess we could come up with something. Uh, Jamar Chase, let's keep in mind, he's banged up. Uh, Keenan Allen for the Chargers on Saturday, he's banged up. There's a lot of injuries uh, that are going to be going around the NFL that we're going to have to keep tabs on over the next few days. Uh, CJ Stroud looks like he's not going to play this week. Trevor Lawrence's concussion protocol. Uh, Zach Wilson, good chance he doesn't play this week. I mean, that actually matters, though, because they're playing the commanders who are really bad. Uh, Geno Smith looks like he's going to be able to come back this week to play the Titans, keep tabs on his status. The matchup is actually good. Bob, we got some good news at running back, though, where it looks like that Jonathan Taylor and Josh Jacobs will be back this week. Yeah, and uh, and I like I think you're gonna plug Jonathan Taylor right back in. I mean, all the whatever you were you blew in your fab budgets or your last remaining dial of fab dollars on Trey Sermon. Uh, or Tyler Goodson may well go for not, but hey, you got to make these kind of moves uh, in the playoff time. You know, even if you swing and a miss, I know I'm doing a lot of moves that I wouldn't normally make uh, because you have one game left, people, if you don't win. And so uh, all by all means necessary. And I do think Jonathan Taylor moves right back up into the running one, running back one conversation. Yeah, I have him in my top 10 uh, for the week. Uh, Reminder, Stevenson uh, still banged up. Ken Walker was added to the injury report this week. Alexander Madison still dealing with the ankle. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, you always got to keep tabs on them. Uh, a wide receiver. Let, all I want for Christmas, Bob, is Tyreek Hill and Michael Pittman Jr. to play this week. I don't care if I get anything else. So I, I thought it was good news. Good hole in my stockings. I need those two guys to play. I think it was good news. You know, so the concussion protocol is a series of steps that have to be completed. Some of those steps are, you know, activity, physical exertion, followed by testing, followed by increased exertion. So when a player doesn't hit the field for the first day, even on a limited basis, you it compresses that time. Michael Pittman hit the field on a limited basis. So it, it's already limited time, right? The Saturday game. So uh, be mindful of that. But he's at least given himself a chance. Let's hope. Uh, really need Michael Pittman Jr. this week. Uh, Nico Collins still dealing with the calf. Marquise Brown, Jaden Reed also dealing with some injuries. Uh, Hunter Henry hurt his knee last week, but I don't know that it's a serious injury. And yeah. 
he's on fire right now. He's got a good matchup as well. So uh, that's a quick <laughs> look at the top injuries that you're going to have to look for uh, over the weekend. And now we're going to get into this exhilarating Thursday night game, Saints and Rams. I guess, I mean, the last two have been, I guess, better than we kind of thought, um, maybe, uh, I guess. But <laughs> the only reason last week's was interesting because of all the fantasy points, because that was a just a, just a slaughter uh, oh, yeah. in, uh, in Las Vegas. But uh, right now the Rams are four-point favorites at home. The over-under is 46. The money line is Saints plus 164. Uh, the Rams at mi- minus 198. Uh, the Saints are 6-8 against the spread this year. They're 4-3 and three against the spread on the road. Interestingly enough, 10 of 14 games overall have gone under the total. The Rams are 8-5 and five against the spread this year. They're 3-3 three and three at home. 8 of 14 games have gone under the total. Uh, the Rams are 7-8 and eight against the spread since last year at home. The Saints are 7-8 and eight against the spread on the road since last year. That really doesn't give us much. Now, also, Saints games on the road have gone under 11 times in the last 15 games. So just keep that in mind that the trend has been the under uh, for these teams. The Saints, if we're talking about must-starts, it, it begins and ends with Alvin Kamara. Uh, and it's Tough not a great matchup, up, Bob. Right? I mean, the Rams have allowed only six touchdowns all year as the running back, but I'm still playing Play him. Play. Yeah, I'm still playing him. Thoughts on Chris Olave, who would be like next in line to maybe be a must-start? I think he probably is a must start this week. It's a it's a it's a good matchup. The Rams aren't really great against receivers. They've sort of given up the fourth most fantasy points to position over the last eight weeks, and uh, and so uh, I'll be all in on the all these pieces here that are playable. Chris Olave is the one that is going to be a certain start, but like if you're in a pinch, I know it's Thursday night and it's scary to play some of these guys, but you know you can dig a little deeper if you need to. Rashid Shahid might be a guy I still play as well. Uh, Derek Carr's coming off a good game, and he had nobody to throw to last week. Uh, Rams giving up the seven most points to quarterbacks this year. Derek Carr, any interest? Um, super flex quarterback two. Yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking. What about Taysom Hill? This is a tough one because he <laughs> came back last week, Bob. He only played 12 snaps. Right. And, and and the Rams have been, and again, like Taysom Hill's a tight end, but you know, he's he's more than that. He's different. Right. Is he, he, is he, he a playable he, asset for you in this game? I think it depends on what you're trying to do, right? This is always something you should be doing. You should be comparing your lineup to your opponent's lineup, looking at the projected scores. I know they're not definitive, but get an idea. Like if you're going to, you know, looks like you're getting boat raced uh, right from the get-go. Well, Taysom Hill's the kind of boom-bust player you want to have in there. If you look like it's going to be a super competitive game and you can't afford to take a zero, uh, then don't. And Taysom Hill, I mean, there's a wide range of possible outcomes. And if he doesn't get those fortuitous goal line wildcat type snaps or he doesn't pass the ball, uh, he doesn't always get a ton of catches either. And it turns out Jimmy Graham is a tight end that scores all the touchdowns there. Uh, <laughs> so six catches, four touchdowns, go figure. Yeah. So, so that, that kind of adds to, to the intrigue, but I, you know, he is, a, he is certainly a playable commodity, but only in the right opportunities. And that's when you're really swinging big, I think. Uh, for the Rams, obviously you're starting Cooper cup and Kyron Williams uh, thoughts on Puka Nakua. The saints have allowed the second fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. Uh, and based on fantasy points data, they're at a negative 6% in terms of schedule adjusted points, which means that typically the wide receivers facing uh, New Orleans uh, don't do as well as the average mean. I I think it's hard to not play him, right? Like, you know, you're probably just setting your expectations a little differently. And if you're, you know, uh, you know, I mean, what, what kind of hairs would you have to be splitting to not play Puka Nakua, right? I mean, I prefer to play uh, Cooper Cup in this game, uh, but Nakuba, I mean, and Cup's working mostly, you know, more than half in the slot too. And I still play him. I'm going to go ahead and trust like this offense and trust Matthew Stafford and still play Puka Nakua and just maybe have more reasonable expectations and not for the higher end. Garrett Wilson against the commanders with potentially Trevor Simeon under center or Puka Nakua? Uh, Puka Nakua for me. Okay. Um, a lot of tough calls there in that, in that wide receiver to uh, flex range. Uh, Matthew Stafford. Four straight games, he's been fantastic, but New Orleans is tough. Six to these points allowed to quarterbacks. Stafford's been matchup proof. Is he in your top 12 this week? Uh, he's right up against it, right? Like, I think he's, uh, where do I have him this week? I need to check. Yeah, he's right at, the, right at the, right inside it. He's 11 or no, nine. I'm sorry. I have him in nine. I moved him up a little bit. So you got so, him yeah. pretty high. Okay. I, so I mean, he's, you know, yep. he's kind of like, you know, like it's like Kyron Williams, uh, you know, the volume is there for Kyron Williams. It's still there for Matthew Stafford. Maybe Kyron Williams is making it easier for this passing attack to work too. Yep. Yeah. Kyron Williams has been great. I mean, fantasy MVP candidate, him and uh, certainly 
Raheem Mostert, if you're looking at, you know, bang for your buck in terms of ADP. Uh, Tyler Higby, any interest in him? Uh, the Saints have given up seven touchdowns to tight ends this year, ninth most points. Uh, probably not. I'll probably take my chances playing it out and study. You know, we all know the dangers of playing Thursday night players. Is you can sit there yeah. and lament your decision to play a Thursday night player uh, through the weekend as you watch everyone else uh, score more. So, like, it's, if like this was a knockout decision, if it was an easy decision, I'd probably go with it. Uh, this is not an easy decision. I'm hoping I have better options. All right. Um, Jen Piacenti, our pal over at Sports Illustrated, only two props for this game that she likes. She likes Derek Carr over one and a half touchdown passes. And she likes Tyler Higby over two and a half catches. Two and a half catches is pretty low. That's, pretty that's low. a low total. I like that. For Higby. So, um, and, and Jen obviously is uh, the best in the business. So uh, if you want to potentially, you know, have a little fun with the player props, go, uh, go crazy, folks. Let's talk about DFS. We'll go through the bargains and fades at each position. We'll start off with the quarterback position. And a lot of people out there are going to be playing DFS because they got knocked out of their uh, seasonal fantasy leagues. Uh, so you know, remember, every league only has, at least most leagues, only have four teams left. So Joe Flacco is playing the Texans. He's at $5,500. Nick Mullins against the Lions, $5,300. Uh, thoughts on Nick Mullins this week, Bob? Yeah, you know, the price is right. Like, and the matchup is right. Uh, I don't know that Nick Mullins totally defined himself last week, but if he did, if that was the starting point, I like what I saw, and I hope he can build on that. I think it's worth a $5,300 gamble. I think Joe Flacco also 900-plus yards over his first three games. He's a little nicked up this week. Watch out for that. And also, Baker Mayfield's in a really good spot and not overpriced. Yeah, weird that Flacco's getting mentioned for comeback player of the year. He's played three games. Um, but, yeah, yeah he's been good. He's been good. Right. Uh, the fades for me, Bob, Kyler Murray against the Bears, whose defense is playing very well. It's a home game for the Bears, 6,400. Uh, and Sam Howell, who got benched last week and has a brutal matchup against the Jets in New Jersey, 6,200 bucks. Not going there. Moving on to the running backs. What are your thoughts on Brees Hall this week? Brees Hall was awful last week. Uh, he's 6,100 bucks. I think that's a bargain against the Commanders. What say you? I think it is too. Like, you know, in my DFS tournament column last week, uh, the Kyron Williams was the pick, not just because he was Kyron Williams, but because everyone thinks it's really easy to pass against the commanders. It is. It's also mm -hmm. not that hard to run against them. Yeah. Um, so I would like this, but I don't know if that I have a great deal of confidence in the workload. Uh, Israel Abanda, Izzy Abanaconda is beat up this week. That's maybe the saving grace. It looked like they're ready to look at other things, right? It looks like the, the giants are in, in, uh, in a, let's see what else we got mode. They know what, they know what Brees Hall is. They like to have him going forward. Maybe when they have Aaron Rodgers uh, this year, they're going nowhere. I, I'm a, th that's my only concern with this one. Do they dial back on the workload uh, this late in the season? Chuba Hubbard, uh, fifty seven hundred dollars. He's getting twenty plus Rock touches going. every week now. Yep. Uh, right Miles Sanders gone. Uh, yeah, he's not fa very fantasy relevant. Um, the fades. It was hard for me to come up with a couple this week. Uh, I have Ken Walker against the Titans at six thousand two hundred dollars. The Titans are good against the run at home, typically. Yeah. Uh, and, and Walker's Tony beat up too. Yeah, and Walker's beat up. He he bounced back. Uh, had a big game last week against the Eagles, but then he up ended up on the injury report. So yep. uh, with a shoulder. Uh, Tony Pollard, uh, my beloveds. Yeah. Um. The, I, I actually this is the Z a Zeke uniform. Um. I guess now You're it's getting a lump of coal from Cowboy Claws from I'm Jerry waiting, Claws. I, I have a Micah Parsons and a CD Lamb coming. Uh, Santa's going to bring those for me. Uh, but Pollard at sixty seven hundred dollars against Miami. Their run defense is pretty decent. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna balk on that. Wide you're receivers. On the, you're on the naughty list for Jerry Claus. That's what I know. <laughs> Baiting one of his players. How dare uh, you? J Jordan Addison against the Lions, six thousand dollars. I love that price. And then Garrett Wilson. I'm I'm. It doesn't matter if the Jets start uh, Simeon or or uh, boy, what they got Brett Ripon now. Jeez Louise. Uh. It's the commanders. It's 50, a hundred bucks. I'm still going to go with Garrett Wilson. Are you, are, do you fear Wilson because of no potentially Zach? Wilson? No, you know, you know, I don't like to overstate the case of, you know, less than ideal quarterbacks, but I, I think it's more about the offensive line and like granted the commanders have no pass rusher. So maybe it's overstating the case, but if you watch that offense last week, it was like almost an unmitigated disaster. I, you know, yeah, one of the worst, worst performances of the year. So I'm a little leery of that. I might try to avoid and find other pieces that I feel have more upside. Garrett Wilson's, you know, the price is right though. Yep. Um, I don't love Adam Thielen this week against the Packers at $5,900. And I loved the McLaurin last week. Loved him. Uh, so I'm not Adam paying 57 against the Jets. The Jets are the, the one of the two toughest teams against wide receivers uh, and perimeter re receivers. Uh, more to the point when they play at home, 
Uh, yeah. You just don't start wide receivers against them in New York. You just don't. It's 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 tough. Um, it's a very tough matchup. I think the, only a couple of guys have gotten off on them. You know, Tyreek had a good game against them. Jalen Waddle had a good game against them. Uh, but the list is short. Uh, the tight ends. Let's go back to my beloved Jake Ferguson, forty nine hundred dollars against the Dolphins. Uh, Cole Komet, who's quietly been pretty good lately, forty four hundred dollars against Arizona. Bob, this Most one price, here, right? this one here, in terms of the fades. Like Kyle Pitts is always a fade for me at four thousand dollars um, until he plays for a different team or there's no Arthur Smith in Atlanta. Dalton Schultz, though, I've got him as a fade. He's forty six hundred bucks. That's a lot. You know, Nico Collins is banged up. They're not going to have Stroud this week. The Browns have gotten smoked by tight ends lately, but if you look at the entirety of the season, they've been pretty tough in the position. Uh, what say you? Uh, I'll probably find other avenues than you know, like good good for Case Keenum, good for the Texans for getting a win. I thought he was serviceable last week. Uh, uh, I don't know. You know, I play more tournaments. Maybe in a cash game, I wouldn't mind him so much. Uh, mm-hmm. But in tournaments, I'm not going to touch any of the t- t- any. All of right. Tournaments. It's time for Stardom and Sidham, Bob. Your favorite time of uh, each podcast that we have here on Thursday on uh, on Believe. And th- th- it's nut cutting time, man. Win or go the hell home. And we're trying to keep you from getting coal in your fantasy stocking this week. So I'll start off with the quarterbacks with Justin Fields. I love him this week. He's my start of the week over at Sports Illustrated. He has not been great lately. Fewer than 11 points in two of his last three games. I think he absolutely hammers the Cardinals this week. I uh, love him. Uh, Dak Prescott, stinker last week. I don't care. This is going to be a high-scoring game. The total opened at 51. I'm all in on Dak and the Cowboys. I've got Trevor Lawrence on the list, but I don't know if he's going to play. The matchup against Tampa Bay is very good. Uh, they've given up 17-plus points to quarterback <clears> seven <throat> times, including five who had more than 20 and Stroud beat him for over 40. But say, over the last four games, Trevor Lawrence has been like what quarterback one. He's been much better. Yes. He's been much better. Um, he started off like that playing better in the second half a little bit yep. slowly, but now he's, now he's starting to go off, but um, the diminished uh, receiving core is a little bit of a concern. Yeah. Now, Zay Jones unlikely to play as well, but Lawrence again is still in concussion protocol as of this taping. Uh, Baker Mayfield, why not? Backup quarterbacks are doing well, so what the hell, man? Uh, 25 points in two straight games. He's got the Jags over the last four weeks. They've given up an average of more than 24 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. And I've got Joey Flacco on here, too. He's averaging almost 18 points per game as a starter in Cleveland. The Texans have allowed 19 more points to quarterbacks six times, including three times on their home field. Uh, So Joe Flacco, who could be on the waiver wire in some leagues, uh, is going to be well worth a look. Bob, thoughts on those quarterbacks? I like all of them. Justin Fields is my quarterback three this week, just ahead of Dak Prescott. I uh, totally agree with you on Lawrence. Mayfield is a starting quarterback this week, and maybe with uh, a little more upside, he's got a great supporting cast. Now that Chris Godwin's back, welcome back, Chris. Appreciate you. Yeah, um, and Mike Evans is always going to be a dominant force, and Rashad White adds to that as well for him. And Joe Flacco, as I mentioned, at like 900-plus yards in his three starts. He's not afraid to throw the ball and they got the weapons to do it. The the Browns have gone from a run first team to a pass first team. So yep. I like that as well. Which is uh, very good for my Amari Cooper shares uh, and Najoku. Uh, the sit quarterbacks this week, Russell Wilson. Russell had 17 and a half last week, but I mean, that's his best game in five games. He has been really like the floor is okay. It's like 14, 15 points, but his ceiling hasn't been great. Uh, and he's got the Patriots. Only three quarterbacks have beaten them for 17.7. Mm-hmm. Now, one of them was Trubisky, so I I understand. But on paper, the matchup's not great if you're trusting the process. Uh, Sam Howell, Jets, no, thank you. Unless you're in a super flex league, uh, Sam Howell is unlikely to put a big stat line against the Jets. Uh, They've allowed the fewest points to quarterbacks in the last four weeks. So keep that in mind. I don't love Jordan Love this week, Bob. Uh, I I get it. I like him more than you. Three of the last four games, he's had over 17. But Carolina has given up fewer than 13 points per game to quarterbacks at home. Uh, and they've only allowed six touching uh, touchdown passes at home. Uh, why do you like Jordan Love maybe more than I do? <clears throat> A little bit of momentum. But my concern, though, is the receiving core. If there is no Jaden Reed to go with no Christian Watson, I'd be dialed back a little bit more. Although, mm-hmm. like, there are outlier plays I still like there. Dontavian Wicks is still a great play. If those other pieces are not there, it may not be a bad play if they are. Yeah. And uh, Tucker Craft also good play there. Yep. Um, uh, we'll talk about tight ends. I don't love Tucker Craft, but if they're down all those wide receivers, that will change. Uh, Jake Browning has been great. 18 plus points in three straight games without Joe Burrow. Uh, kid's got a little fire in his belly. He's playing the Steelers this week, though, allowing 14 points per game to quarterbacks 
at the big ketchup bottle. I don't care what it's called right now. It's always Heinz Field to me. Um, so Jake Browning's a bit of a risk. And then Aiden O'Connell, please don't chase the points. Don't. No. I, he had a huge game last week, four touchdowns. The Chargers, they threw in the towel, man. They really did. Uh, much like Rocky should have done for Creed in uh, Rocky Three. Bob loves that reference. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, the Chiefs defense has been tough on quarterbacks at home. So Aiden O'Connell uh, is, a, is a fade for me. Any disagreements on those, Robert? Uh, no, I think I'm, I'm with you, except uh, I, I love Clubber Lang. No How fading Clubber Lang. How dare you? Come on. Oh, actually, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I got my Rockies wrong. Rocky four mm-hmm. is when he threw in the uh, throw the towel. Throw the damn towel. Remember uh, against Drago? Yeah, that was Rocky four. My, what is wrong with me? I love Rocky and I got the movies mixed up. It must right. be like week 16 and my brain is flipping fried. Uh, that must be it, Bob. Uh, let's go to the running backs. And uh, am, am I am I going with a little low-hanging fruit here? Yep. But James Cook's been on fire ever since Ken Dorsey got canned. Right. Uh, he's been great. He had a huge game last week. Oh. And the Chargers are awful against running backs. Six yeah. more points allowed. Uh, they've given up 17-plus points to running backs four times in, since week 10. James Cook is a must-start. Three yeah. hard. Go ahead. Uh, no, I agree on James Cook. There's no, there's no arguments here. Brees Hall. I, I, I think they're gonna give him a, wor- a full workload. I don't think the Jets will get killed in this game. I think it's gonna be a close game. My guess is that the Jets will be uh, competitive because the Commanders stink. I'm gonna stick with Brees Hall. You know, I, I've had to write about Derrick Henry in this column a couple of times because he's coming off of his worst game ever, ever. He was terrible last week, and it was against Houston, who he has owned. But. 18 plus points in the three previous games. I'm not going to kill him for an awful performance. Although a lot of people are, you know, home since he uh, decided to do it the first week of the playoffs. But over the last four weeks, Seattle's defense has allowed the third most points to running backs. Uh, I've got Devon Achan on the list. Achan has not been great lately. His last two games, 12 and nine points. Like this is a guy who we were really on the reg expecting 20. But look what Cook did to the Cowboys last week. My beloveds. Yeah. Smoked them. Not good. Smoked them. So um, I, I would start HN and Chuba Hubbard also against the Packers. Uh, six most points allowed of running backs in the last four weeks. Chuba's been hot. Uh, he's getting a boatload of touches. Uh, think, Bob, what say you? I think I should acknowledge on Brees Hall. Like two weeks ago when he had the bum ankle and didn't practice much, I thought they would dial back on him and he just went great guns. This week, I, you know, I'm concerned they're going to dial back on him based on the usage last week. Uh, Bonaconda, as I mentioned, is a little nicked up, didn't practice to start the week. So so maybe I'm totally misfiring on this one. Reese Hall is a very good player. If you have him, you're probably playing him. Um, I'm probably just going to avoid him in DFS. Uh, running backs to sit or to fade in DFS, Saquon Barkley. I, I know, wait, uh, Fabs, wait a minute. Ken Walker ran over, over the Eagles. Not in Philadelphia, he didn't. Their defense is much better at home. So keep that in mind. And Barkley's had single digits in three of his last five games. I know you probably got to play him. Just something to think about there. Uh, James Conner, another guy you probably got to play. He's been good. I mean, he's been like Santa Harris giving out gifts on Christmas uh-huh. Eve lately. 40.4 points per game. Uh, but over the last four weeks, the Bears defense has allowed one touchdown and the six fewest points per game, the running backs. So this is not a great matchup for Conner. Keep that in yeah. mind. Uh, Javante Williams was a sit last week and he stunk. Stink, stank, stunk. Grinch. Uh, the Patriots have given up the fifth fewest points to running backs over the last four weeks and two and a half yards per rush. Javante is a risk. I, I know people are going to disagree with me on this one. And Bob, you could disagree with me. That's fine. I know a lot of people are going to start Devin Singletary this week. I totally get it. He's been really good for mostly the last month or so. But here's the issue. The Browns have allowed the ninth fewest points to running backs this year. And if Houston's getting smoked in this game, they may have to dial back what they do on the ground, which would hurt Singletary. And I could see the Browns beating Houston, considering what's going on right now with their offense. If Nico Collins doesn't play, looks like CJ Stroud's Mm. uh, potentially going to be out again. We know no Nico Collins. So Singletary's a risk-reward flex. Uh, Gus Edwards also, even though he's probably going to see a little bit more burn because Keaton Mitchell's out, I don't love the matchup against San Francisco. Uh, Bob, your thoughts on Devin Singletary? Um, so the same thing you mentioned about game script could work against Joe Flacco, right? If they get out, get out in front early, you know, and I've been thinking about that as well. So I'm not going to disagree with that. It, you know, when Singletary hits, he hits hard. I don't know if this is a game he hits. Uh, moving on to the wide receivers. We'll start Rasheed Rice this week against the Raiders. Uh, he had a good game against them earlier in the season. The Raiders have also allowed 18 plus points to at least one wide receiver in four of their last five games. Uh, so Rice is a good play. 
Uh, we talked about Garrett Wilson as a DFS play. I also like him against the commanders in traditional leagues, even with the quarterback situation being maybe not so uh, attractive. They've allowed the second most points to perimeter receivers this season. The commanders have. I like New Hopkins to bounce back this week. I don't know who the quarterback's going to be for the Titans. Will Levis is banged up. It could be Tannehill. Now, if it's Malik Willis, I don't want anything to do with New Hopkins. Nothing. But if it's don't Tannehill, yeah, if it's Tannehill or Levis plays, I like Nuke against the Seahawks. They've given up the fifth most points to wide receivers uh, this season. So keep that in mind. Calvin Ridley, again, tied to his quarterback. He has not been great lately, and he's not been great this year. Really inconsistent. But the Bucs have allowed seven touchdowns and the ninth most points per game to perimeter receivers. If Trevor Lawrence starts, Calvin Ridley starts for me. If Trevor Lawrence is out, probably going the other direction. Uh, Jordan Addison. We talked about him in DFS bargains, really good play this week against the Lions. And look at his numbers with and without Justin Jefferson. From a fantasy perspective, way better with JJ drawing defenses, Bob. Yeah, I think that's perfectly readable. I agree with you. Wide receiver sits. Uh, Terry McLaurin, we told you to play him last week. He had a huge game this week, not so much against the Jets. Very tough on wide receivers, uh, lined out wide at home. Uh, we hate the Drake again, second straight week against the Colts. Taylor Heineke is going to be the starter this week. The Colts have allowed one touchdown and the seven fewest points of perimeter receivers in the last four weeks. Bob, you made a little bit of a look. Do you like London this week? No, I don't. I totally, I totally off him. Like it's not a trustworthy passing attack unless they're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Right. Uh, George Pickens, who I'm really disappointed in him. I thought he'd have a really good season and he's been bad. He doesn't, you know, he's worried about getting not, hurt, not you don't blocking. Need him to block for you. You'll be fine. Yeah. He scored eight points against the Bengals earlier this season. That's a Saturday game. I'm not going there. Uh, Jacoby Myers against the Chiefs. That's a Monday night game. Uh, one of the three games on Monday, which ought to be fun. Uh, actually, that's a Monday afternoon game. The Monday night game is Niners Ravens. Uh, Myers coming off a big game over 15 points, but uh, that was against the Chargers. The Chiefs have allowed the seven fewest points to wide receivers and the third fewest at Arrowhead. So Myers is a risk. And I've got Noah Brown against his uh, NFL team namesake, the Browns here on the list. A uh, huge game last week, much bigger than we thought, 22 points. But even if Nico Collins is out again, the Browns have allowed the second fewest points mm, to wide yep. receivers this year, Bob. Um, thoughts on these players? I think look elsewhere on all those players. Totally, We're, we're in total agreement. That makes me nervous when I agree with you this much. Yeah, that's that, that's not, maybe this week goes completely sideways, like every week seems to be going um, in, in the fantasy football world. Uh, all right, moving on to the tight ends. A couple of low-hanging pieces of fruit here because the tight end position is is not good. Um, it's been leaving Cole in our stockings all year long. Trey McBride against the Bears. He's had 20-plus points in two straight games. The Bears have allowed the third-most points at tight ends in the last four weeks. They gave up almost 27 points in Njoku uh, in Week 15, so this is a good spot for McBride, especially if Hollywood Brown doesn't play. Uh, speaking of Njoku, huge game last week. Uh, at least 11.8 points in seven of his last eight games. Joe Flacco loves throwing him the football. The Texans have given up the sixth most points and a 73.7% catch rate to tight ends. So he's in a good spot. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, if you're hurting, the last time he played the Bengals, he had a massive game. The Bengals are bad against tight ends. You can start him if you're hurting. Thoughts about Dalton Kincaid, Bob, because I've got him as a stardom because the Chargers have allowed the fifth most receiving yards and the seventh most <clears> points <throat> to tight ends. So the matchup is good. But in the last two weeks since Dawson Knox has come back, Kincaid's disappeared. He did nothing last week. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kincaid? Because I'm on the fence about him. I don't know if this is Dawson Knox related. I know I like we we want to find the single variable reason for this. I think it's a multi-variable. Maybe Dawson Knox is a factor, but also the running game has been a factor, right? They're just running the ball more. They didn't throw the ball much last week. Uh, and I think that's been a bigger issue to me than the Dawson Knox return. If I think this is going to be a pass-heavy game script, then I think I'm still fine playing Dalton Kincaid. I don't know that it's going to be, though. But it's, you know, the matchup is there. Yeah, the matchup's there. Um, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, but it's weird because, they, yeah, they are running the ball more um, with Brady as the offensive coordinator calling the shots. But it is strange that, like, in the games where Knox has played, Kincaid's not been good. I just right. made that nasty, you know, I just got a lemon in my mouth and it's gross. Or somebody just, you know, like this. The I thought it was the cowboy hat the, you were wearing. The, the, the fruitcake in there. and it's, Yeah. I thought it was the cowboy hat you were wearing. <laughs> giving you a sour that, that'll beat. be my look in the playoffs when we get beat. I'll, I'll, I'll probably be like, like this, more or less. Uh, anyways, let's get the hat fixed here, Bob. You know, all right. So look at our our 
our little furry balls are almost touching. That's not all right. That might not make it onto the podcast. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Kyle Pitts. <laughs> Uh, you are a Scrooge underneath that Santa hat. Uh, Kyle Pitts against the Colts. No, thank you. Um, he's nice. been a sit for most of the year. Uh, the Colts have not allowed more than 11.4 points to a tight end this year. Uh, so the ceiling's not good. We mentioned Dalton Schultz a little bit earlier on in the program. Uh, playing against the Browns, he's a risk-reward uh, tight end one type. I have Tucker Kraft on the sit list because the Panthers have been really tough. Only four touchdowns and the fourth fewest points of tight ends. But if the Packers don't have Christian Watson or Jaden right. Reed this week, then it changes. Um, we're I not agree. sure about that. Uh, I want to get Chiggy with it. I can. I'm not starting him against Seattle. Uh, anybody else, Bob? You agree? Disagree? Thoughts on this? Uh, no, love love the McBride play. I mean, you know, you look at last week, the receivers had, what, 25 yards of worth of uh, production in that game, totally for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, yeah. The tight ends finished one, two, and three. And that was two of them only had one catch. So that tells you a little something. Uh, so, so yeah, I think that I think, I think McBride to me is like the locked in play. Like Sam LaPorta, you're playing every week as well. I mean, hard to go away yeah. from that volume. TJ Hawkinson as well. I'm probably still playing, um, you know, over some of these other players you've mentioned. But if you have tough decisions or, or you're digging a little deeper, I think some of your plays are perfectly fine. Yeah, listen, I mean, sometimes you got to go with your gut. Uh, tight end's a tough position. You know, thank, thank God we got McBride. Uh, who's really emerged, and, and, right? I, so <clears> we've <throat> had we've had some players who've kind of you know come out and um, I, think, I think more than ever before, Fabs. Like you know, team, when you see when you see a team go from zero to sixty three points in four days, yeah, that's what the NFL is right now. And so you know you're having a hard time sorting out what the outcomes of games are. If you can find some certainty and volume, and Trey McBride gives you that, man, that that's gold in fantasy. All right. Um, it is Christmas time. Ho, ho. And of course, we wish everybody out there a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll be back next week. Uh, so you won't miss us between Christmas and the start of the new year. Um, Bob, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, like, I, I know you're a Scrooge, so I'm guessing it's a Christmas carol, but your favorite Christmas movie, Bob Harris? It's Die Hard. Would you stop it, please? It is. I mean, it's not no a Christmas better. movie. That's yeah. not a Christmas movie. It We're is gonna... a movie that is set during Christmas time. That so makes it a Christmas Ford movie. Christmas movie. They fought on Christmas Day. Is yes. Oh, oh. the Christmas movie? Do it. That yes. was during Christmas. Yes. It is not a Christmas movie. When I think Christmas, I don't think murder and terrorism and explosions, Bob. Okay? All right. Give me a Christmas movie that's not Die Hard. I'm trying to think of one. You're you're ridiculous, man. All right. The 1951 version of A Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim. You were Best watching Christmas that last night. Of all time. Yes, I was watching it last night. I was quoting it in the black and white version. I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Uh, Christmas Vacation, also very good. A Christmas Story. Sorry, I love that movie. I know some people don't because it's on constantly, but I'm a big fan of that movie as well. So uh, there are certainly some Christmas movies out there that I absolutely dig. I always watch The Grinch with Jim Carrey and the cartoon. Uh, Charlie Brown Christmas, got to watch that. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Although Santa's an ass in that thing. Like when you're a kid, you don't realize it, but Santa's kind of a D in that. He doesn't let Rudolph play in the reindeer games or, or whatever. He's like, oh, Rudolph, oh, you had potential, but your nose is red. So go <laughs> go screw. Like that's not cool. Come on, fat man. Be better than that. You got a better. I just like the abominable now. snowman. <laughs> the abominable, you know, you know, Bumble's bounce. Did you know that? I do. All right, Bob Harris, I love you, man. Oh, by the way, um, we got nominated for the best fantasy betting and gaming podcast by Sports Pod Group. Uh, so thanks, everybody, uh, for your support. We're very happy. I would say that the podcast has been much better since Bob Harris has joined. Uh, you know, nobody wants to see me alone all day long. Um, it's, you know, just it's, it's better. And I know that, you know, you don't see me, but we do some stuff that ends up on some TV stations and people don't want to see just me. Uh, although. I'm rocking it. Look at this beautiful Cowboys hat. Oh my goodness gracious, Bob Harris. It's glorious. Let's go Cowboys. I got to take out the Dolphins this week. Uh, <laughs> Bob Harris, uh, any any last thoughts here before before we head off into fantasy championship semifinal weekend? I hope everyone has a fantastic holiday. Get to spend it with the people they love, doing the things they like doing the best, and uh, and, and and have a great time. Uh, uh, I second that. Uh, thanks for listening, of course, as always, to the Believe Fantasy Football Show presented by Bet Online. 
Everybody have a great holiday. I hope you get all the gifts that you want, including the gift of a fantasy championship appearance. And watch that 1951 version of A Christmas Carol in black and white. I'm telling you, you won't, you won't be disappointed. It's fantastic. And Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. Bob Harris, bah humbug. I love you, brother. Uh, we will see you next week right here on the Believe Fantasy Football Show. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and good luck. Oh, <laughs>